Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna fix the Peugeot 207, which is pretty much the same as the Peugeot 308. So, the problem we've had is the, basically the car got stranded on my poor sister and she said she was driving into work, she went around a bend and all the lights lit up on the dash and it gave her loads, loads of random faults. And quick diagnosis, diagnose what the problem was. Uh, she said the power steering went really hard and I kind of knew from that that it's electric assist power steering so if there's no obviously electricity coming from the battery there's going to be something wrong so originally I thought maybe it was one of these terminals was loose so I got her to check that before going to rescue her and of course yeah it was a 100% dead battery but it wasn't just a dead battery why was the battery dead well the alternator which is way off down there somewhere see it does tough it there uh, I think it died so we put the multimeter on it, and this is what we're going to do. So we're going to put onto volts, so DC volts. It's currently reading 12, and when we start the engine, it should read higher than what we started at, because obviously the alternator is going to be recharging the battery. So a good alternator will bring you up to about 14.2, 14.3, around that kind of, roughly about that size. Uh, yeah, mostly the time it ranges is from 13.5-ish, all the way up to 14.5, say, for that kind of range. So, okay, so this is just what we did. Uh, sorry about my nose, it's a bit blocked at the moment. It's not COVID, it's man flu, so it is even worse. I know, I could die, it is man flu. Anyway, so we put the multimeter onto the batteries, or onto the single battery, turned on to DC volts. We have 12 volts here. So when we started the car, we should end up with more volts than we started with. Um, simply because the alternator is going to recharge the battery. The battery sits at probably about 12 and a half, 13 is kind of what's happy at, so it is a little bit low at the moment. Um, and when you start it, it's going to take a lot of power to start the engine, but then the alternator is going to give back the power, so it's going to charge at 14 volts because when you turn off the engine, it'll sit down at 13 because there's always going to be losses along the way. So the wires are going to have resistance in it, they're going to heat up you're warming up the battery. There's just gonna be loads of losses. So that's why we go at 14 volts, and then we turn it off, it should stay at 13 volts. So then when you crank the engine, you have enough capacity. So at the moment it is a little bit low, it is low, but also the alternator doesn't work. So in this video we're going to, um, well, I, I can start the car, but it's not gonna be any different. We start the engine, you're not gonna be, hear, be able to hear me, but it's going to stay at exactly the same voltage or even a little bit lower. So unfortunately, yeah, the battery's okay, alternator's dead. So this vi this video, we're going to replace the alternator in a Peugeot 207, and this is a HDI 1.6. Okay, so I'm back with the Peugeot 207, and uh, this time we have the alternator failure. So in this video, I'm just gonna give a quick rundown of how I got the old, old alternator out and put the new one in. So this is the old alternator, the problem was there's oil basically coming down the engine and it just covered all the insides and it basically degraded everything, short circuiting stuff, I don't know, whatever else it did. But anyway, that is kaput. I brought it to the service shop and they said there's nothing they can do to fix it. It is a total write-off. So rather than spending 200 quid on a new one, I got a second-hand one. So this is out of an 09 308, so it's the next generation on. And they're the exact same, so there are the part numbers. There at the back, that's the part number. That one there is 80 amps. So this one's 80 amps, and the other one that I've just put in is 80 amps. They put a flat side here, so some of them, they'll have like a little boomerang shape. This one is flat, and um, yeah, they're the exact same. Same thickness, same everything, and the clutch flywheel on it as well. So it only goes in one direction and slips in the other direction. Right, exact same. So, how do you get the damn thing out? <laughs> right, alternator is broken, so we're going to take off the wheel. <laughs> why, why, I don't know, but this is what we have to do. So take off the wheel, the dust liner, get the torch there. Okay, so you take off the wheel, take off the dust liner, just for one bolt, which is that one there. So this is a Torx. Uh, 
Okay, it doesn't have a number on the Torx, but anyway, it's a Torx, Torx bit, whatever it is. And um, I'm not making this up, so there's no tensioner on this belt, so I can't figure out how to tension it. So, uh, it doesn't seem to have an actual tensioner, so the only way to release the tension is basically just to take off the alternator. So that's what we're going to do first. So obviously we went, came up here, there's intercooler pipes here. The best thing I can tell you is take off everything. So there's a blue coupler here, or whatever it was. This, take off all of that. And then there's a second pipe back down here. And there's the throttle body, or not the throttle, but the mass flow air meter that's just here. Take off all of that. And when you undo the top nut, the alternator will want to fall forwards, which will release the pressure on the belt. And then you can take off, obviously, the belt and take off the alternator. Uh, there's nuts and bolts to be done here, here, and you take off the idler wheel. So the idler wheel, that's why we take off all of this to get in off the idler wheel. But that isn't a tensioner, it's just an idler wheel. Yeah, Peugeot. Um, anyway, once the alternator is free, it's going to be locked in there because Peugeot. Uh, so you have to bring the whole alternator this way. You can see there is pretty much no room there because it's going to be slightly forward as well. So you're going to be up against this, so you're going to have less room. So there's, you just keep wiggling it at forwards and backwards. So then at the bottom, so at the opposite end of this bracket here, so maybe there was one at the top as well, but obviously I don't have it. So the one at the bottom is this. So it's just basically a nut with a sleeve on it and it fits so say if this was the bottom it fits going this way so when you slide all of this back this way you're going to end up with this and you have to wiggle all of this body out without catching this side or this side and you can to get the alternator out so that's a pain in the ass to do once you have it out it has to come up this way it doesn't go out through the side and uh, the solution I found was just take off the auxiliary or the overflow for the water bottle, take all your loom and shove it way off over this way. There is a big uh, pin sticking out there, shove it over that, get as much of it out of the way and then you can take it up. Um, I got mine out that way. So to get it back in, it would not go back in. So the only way I could figure out how to get it back in, because it's literally just stuck up here, it wouldn't come down, was I took a hacksaw blade had cut off a piece so this piece here sticks out just here and whatever way Peugeot designed it it's in such a perfect way that no matter how good you are at Tetris it the alternator will just not go down and basically the the pulley has to be looking straight up at you so it's going down as like a cylinder and it just would not go down no matter what way I tried I don't know how I even got the other one out so I cut that off um, just there and then it actually slid back down much easier so it doesn't do anything it's just I don't know auxiliary I think it's actually designed to make fitting the alternator impossible so hey got rid of that alternator went down I had to take an angle grinder and grind off I think it was like one mil just off this side here on obviously on the underneath side so when you're putting it in between the pins here and the other pin that's over there um, with that big long nut sticking out of it it was just enough space just to get in because after 20 goals I gave up trying to get it in so um, yeah this is absolutely pain in the ass by the way you have only this to work with like you don't have there's not really enough room for two hands and a torch so it's going to be very difficult no matter what you do <coughs> so anyway, once you get it in Get the pulley on the bottom in as well, put the belt on, and then what I did was got a big bar, shoved it way off underneath the alternator. So that, well, you can't see it now, but it is underneath the alternator. I stood on it. By standing on it, it brings the top of it up around. Line up the bolt while standing, keeping your foot out there, standing on it. Line it up. And shove in your pin now all of this sounds very very easy to do when it's the first time you ever did it and 
you're trying to work out why is there no tensioner? Why isn't it obvious or logical? I don't know, but this is the way I figured out how to do it, and uh, it seems to be working out all right for me. So, um, yeah, I think I'm like, I don't know how long it took me to get the alternator out, but it took me two hours to get the alternator into this little bracket up here, or at the bottom, say. And uh, once I figured out how to get the belt back on, it's, it's easy enough to start coming back around. So we'll whiz this in. Of course, you can't whiz it in with a ratchet because they have designed it, it doesn't fit. So for fuck's sake, we have to do everything manually by hand. So we'll do that. And yeah, even the bolt down there, well, I've managed to pull enough stuff out of the way, but it, I think they wanted you to do that by manual work as well. So thank you, I can get the gun in now to whiz it in. Um, yeah, you have to do this down here as well. And then just have to plug in the plug. That's not too bad. And then put every single thing that didn't actually need to come off back on that isn't part of an alternator. Obviously, at the very, very start, do disconnect your battery because you're playing with live wires as well. So, and they're not, or, or not fused. So don't forget, very, very first step, obviously, to disconnect both ends of the battery because um, it's called memory. So copper, when you have it there, it'll want to naturally just fall back on top of the uh, terminal just because that's the way the wires have always been bent in that shape and uh, so I always disconnect negative and positive because especially if you're doing this you don't want as you're moving stuff around like as you're like pulling random stuff you don't want the the leads to start moving by themselves so yeah disconnect both sides or make sure or pull the battery or whatever you want to do so um yeah have the alternator back in so yeah there's no tensioner which is absolutely bizarre. So that there, the, the idler wheel, is literally just, say like that nut there, just shoved in, goes in through, say the, the bottom of this bracket. There's no spring, there's no tension on it. It's literally the tension of the belt. So obviously as the belt wears, the tension becomes less. So there's no automatic tension on it. Really strange. Um, okay, come back to you when it's finished. Ta-da! Okay, it's all back together again, so let's jump into the cab, turn it on, and see if the battery's going to charge. Okay, right, let's go in here and see if all our hard work paid off. Okay, so I have the multimeter set up there. It's 11.89. Okay, make sure it's out of gear. Okay, start it up. Go on, charge up. 14, 13, 14, brilliant. Okay, so you can see it awkwardly there that it is actually charging. So that means the alternator that we got is a good alternator. It's charging the battery and uh, yeah, delighted. So now to reset date, time, I think there's a, a rear bulb that has to be replaced, but uh, absolutely delighted it finally works. It was a hell of a lot of effort. I hate this car, don't like French cars, but it is fixed and uh, it can get her going again. So my sister is delighted again. So guys, obviously you can hear my nose. Yeah, it's a bit blocked. It is man flu. It, I am, um, I could die. Like it's man flu. Like that's serious shit. Like, but anyway, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. If I survive this man flu, I will see you next week. See you later. Okay, so I just want to say a special thank you to Clara Cars. So I went out to the breakers and they had an alternator for me, so they gave it to me at a very good price, so very happy with that. So thanks very much. If you are looking for an alternator, you live in Ireland, give Clara Breakers a call.